Hi, I'm Cindy. And I'm Michael. From the Part-Time Permies. Uh, today we've prepared a foraged or partially foraged uh, meal uh, coming from our farmer's market and some friends um, at Bonamigo Farm. Today is my day off, so uh, we're playing with some food that has um, we've acquired from the market and from some other sources, and uh, we're just going to uh, build a quick dinner. Um, not 100% certain what we're going to end up with. I'm working with a few new items today. I have some pepper weed, uh, which was locally foraged and um, uh, purchased from a friend at the market from Bonamigo Farms and Foraging. Uh, so there's pepper weed here and um, did a little bit of research and tasted it. Basically tasted lightly horseradishy and it's been recommended to put it in salads or to uh, pan fry it uh, lightly or like wok fry it and that it's quite nice. I have also uh, got some of the first of the season of um, nettles or stinging nettles. They're extremely small and really this is the first week um, early in the season to get them for us. So um, have not worked with them a lot, although I've eaten them, and I, I know that they're typically um, cooked and, and quick sauteed, or they are blanched and made into pestos, or put into cheese, and things like that. Uh, of course, seeing nettles, they irritate the skin. I think we're gonna put some of these items together uh, for a little vegetable saute. We have a couple of uh, two or three um, turnips from last year's uh, late harvest um, that came out of the ground today. And I'll probably chip those up and put them in. And I have some uh, have some nice um, baby starts to some ramps. And then there's a local uh, guy who cultivates some wild mushrooms. And we have some Devil's Beard, a little more matured, a little younger, uh, which are really nice, um, exotic. And this is a let's say it's a honey mushroom. Um, they get quite slimy when you cook them, although they have a strong, fairly strong pungent mushroomy flavor, and I've worked with them before. Uh, they're very popular in Asian and Japanese uh, cuisine for the flavor. So I'm gonna get those somewhere into uh, a quick hot saute. Um, thought I might put a little sweet potato, just stir sweet potato in, because we need some starch. And I've got a piece of flank steak that I pulled out of the freezer. Uh, again, it's a, just a traditional grocery store flank steak. It's been cleaned. Um, and we have uh, some locally produced miso paste uh, from Bonamigo and their uh, foraging and projects. Uh, and so this is a hand prepared uh, miso. And I was also given some uh, ramps, uh, must be from last year. These are pickled fermented ramps in a Korean style. And I'm thinking I might chop a little bit of that and also put that on um, the flank steak and give it a quick marinade before we uh, sear it off. It was, it was a gift and it smelled great. Like stand to sit for a few hours. Um, be better if it had two or three hours in the refrigerator um, with the uh, with the fermenting marinade and the miso and ramps stuff. But I'm just going to kind of rub it in there and I'm going to decide. Um, you know, I could sear this whole, but I might burn the condiments um, marinade. So. I might end up just cutting it up and kind of doing a quick stir fry with it. Um, plank steak can get a little chewy because it's so lean. So if we do that, we need to cut it up very small. So blanch it. So blanch this really quick. Got a little bit more to play around with. Um, 
going to be making a pesto. I'd love to, uh, I know it can be pureed into a soup. I'd love to put in some cheese, but I don't have any cheese curd waiting to be made pressed into cheese. So. And that's the nettle. This is the stinging nettle. So I'm going to make sure that it isn't going to sting us. We, this is one item we do not want to eat raw or in, in any form of a salad. Um, this thingy. These are again really young sprouts. Um, person that I've been working with and, and getting the forage product is, is very good and experienced and um, they're going into places, these are so young they're difficult to find. They need to know where they are and, and take the labor to get them. But this is pretty pretty rare product in my opinion. Um, I, mean, I just don't expect to see these things this early in Michigan. Um, season has affected it a little bit. You're getting an early start, but still this is this is not uh, not what I expected to find in the market over the last couple of weeks. Still pretty much thinking winter and um, storage crops still being the primary. Chips of sweet potato. Let the skin on. Um, and we'll see if we can get those to cook out at some reasonable period of time here. They have a little bit of a thicker skin on them because they've been wintered in the ground. They're not that thick and they're fresh. They pulled out, so I'm thinking we can get away with not uh, peeling them. vegetable when you right now and I know that I need a really hot pan cooking uh, these honey mushrooms I know that they're gonna um, get slimy quite late and I need to get them in a super hot pan the uh, devil's beard I've seen it wild and cultivated this is some of the nicer samples I've seen uh, that I've seen uh, cultivated and haven't been able to work with it much because it's Hard to get a hold of some, most of the time. Pretty, pretty generous amount of Oh, 
little water in here. I do think I'm going to cut this up to do a little stir fry. That's going to be the safest bet. Get some good flavor in there and not burn things up too much, make them too tough. Given a few hours of marination, I'm going to might want to put it on the grill, on a real hot grill, and sear it, pull it off medium rare, slice it. Plain steak, it's kind of a classic barbecue item uh, in the summer. And it, it carries a lot of flavor as long as you treat it properly. So uh, I'm smelling a lot of um, sort of earthy, a little bit funky flavors. The uh, the miso obviously is, is earthy, and, and it's not a real strong miso, but it's sort of a traditional uh, rustic uh, one. That, um, however, the pickled ramps have a bunch of uh, sesame seeds, sesame oil. I, I think have some miso or gochujang, or, which is Korean chili paste, also made by this producer. Um, marinating in with it, and so I'm finding, uh, I'm smelling a lot of those uh, flavors. I think I'm going to sear the mushrooms. Same thing, use some olive oil, got a real hot pan here, I hope. I'm going to bring it up near smoking, and mushrooms take quite a bit of, uh, see a lot of heat, so I want to see it really hot pan before I put them in. pre-cooking those heavier vegetables because everything else is delicate and just needs a moment to cook. Keep uh, fresh ground pepper in here. And mushrooms can really absorb oil quickly. Sometimes after they sear a little bit, they start giving off some of the oil back, so we make sure I got enough to do a good job. So some of you might be a little more comfortable using a uh, spatula or a tong. I'm just I'm fairly comfortable picking in pans with my fingers uh, carefully and knowing what I'm, what's in there and trying. This is a habit of cooks over years. They, uh, get pretty comfortable turning things in the pan sometimes with their fingers. A lot, the, a lot of the French, you know, they don't like to bruise things with tongs, so it's using these more delicate spatulas and using forks or, you know, meat forks and sometimes tweezers and my day off and I'm just cooking at home and getting a pretty nice um, light mushroom aroma it's lightly earthy and fresh um, smells not heavy heavy mushroom smells um, if you're not getting a mushroom like this forage you're probably going to pay quite a bit of money for it uh, when you can find it especially in a bigger city good softening here with vegetables. I don't want to cook these too much. I'm going to reintroduce them. The second set of mushrooms, I want to have an even hotter pan because I know they're going to react and I want to break down and stick and I want to get some flavor out of them quickly. Alright, I'm seeing a nice amount of 
light smoke coming off the pan, it tells me that I'm about as hot as I can get without having a flare up. Get a little hotter. So these are starting to break down, give off some water, and they suck their munch that olive oil in there. Um, very light in flavor, and just a touch of bitterness in them. Um, these honey mushrooms will also, uh, aside from having a real nice mushroom flavor, will provide a little bit of bit bitterness from what I uh, recall from previous experiences. Um, I would say these mushrooms sort of have the smell of a sort of a slightly moist stamp for us. not bitter. They haven't gotten slimy yet. And they're uh, mild and pretty tasty. I need to get the meat going and uh, do that in a real hot pan and then I'll finish with these other um, greens and pull everything together sort of into a melange or a vegetable melange and the meat. Now I didn't put any salt on the meat yet so I'd like to season that a little bit. Got a little sesame oil or something on it from the marinade, so I'll add more oil to the pan, but I don't need to oil this at all. Let's see if I got enough heat to cook this meat. This is, this is a moderately smoking pan, and we're moving between, I want to put the meat in between there and a heavily smoking pan. Uh, chance of flare up is reasonable, but I don't have a lot of, uh, you got to watch out for wet items. That's why I'm careful with the vegetables. Uh, the meat is not wet, so it could flare up, but I don't have a lot of water to cause a big flare up. It's about as much meat as I would want to put in a product put in a hot pan because it's going to cool it down. So I just want to get it spread out and then I don't want to move it too much as it gets a good sear on one side and hopefully the pan will stay hot enough that I can get it flipped over and get a little more sear on it. That smells really good. Yeah, it smells a little funky in the marinating but once it hits the heat and the meat, uh, it's, it smells very nice. So by using a hot pan, I, I can get some coloration, but also uh, it won't stick to the pan. And I'll avoid getting gray meat and hopefully get some nice brown meat that gives us color and extra flavor. Um, the ramps, which you know, create that onion and garlic background, uh, sear nicely and provide a lot of depth of flavor also. At this point, I'm going to uh, use this mushroom pan. I've used it twice, but I haven't burned the bottom on it. I've been careful. Um, so uh, it's fine to use it again. I like to reuse pans as long as we haven't created a crust that's going to burn. Um, with using hot enough oil and using hot pans, I can usually cook things a couple times and get them out uh, before I cause an issue. The beef has started, the pan's cooled down a lot. This is not a commercial cooktop, so it's hot, but you know, it's not like I had a restaurant stove or a wok where I just have intense heat. So I do want to be careful that I don't boil the meat and toughen it up, but it seems to be still frying. The next thing I'm going to do is cook the uh, pepper root. It is recommended to me to fry it out. 
Here's a good example of a hot pan and having something with a little bit of water, uh, although I've smothered it with the uh, volume of Some of these items, it's the first time I've cooked with them, like the pepper root uh, and the nettles. Um, so I'm responding to them a little bit and watching their texture, how they take on uh, the heat and the oil. <clears throat> I'm also having to decide exactly what I'm doing with this dish because it's home cooking. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is, is this beef is near done. I think I'm going to go with the beef and mushrooms. Seems to make the most sense. this point, I don't want to break down mushrooms too much more. So I'm just going to do a beef and mushrooms. Almost tastes like a soy sauce type background, although I didn't add any soy sauce, but the miso, the miso has similar characteristics. meat's got some chew to it, but it's not tough because it was sliced thin and we cooked it quickly. As this cooks out a little more, I'm going to get the nettles and the ramps in. The ramps, I want to get some tan contact and bring some of those seared onion flavors out. to make sure that this is flavorful and the things kind of soften a little bit. Not too crunchy. Check some of the roots here. And, uh, they soften right up. They have a carrot, almost a, a light carrot flavor now from that horseradish bitterness. Um, and a little bit of heat goes away, which is pretty common of, of um, mustard greens and other things that, that have a, a bite to it when you cook them in this case. I'd say it's tender and it's um, leaf tastes a lot like spinach. A little bit of sweetness and some green herb. The root tastes between carrots and like salsa feet or um, scorzione root. Um, they're mild and they're delicate and a little bit, a little bit sweet, very lightly sweet, sort of a semi-neutral, but um, should provide a real nice background because we have sweetness and earthiness and some bitterness between the turnips and the sweet potatoes. And then we have some funky and mushroom and, and such from the, uh, in the meat, I think it's a good balance. I'm gonna, Put these together. We're going to make that. Start taking my heat off and all the heat is off. I'm just going to bring these together. So I'm, I'm hoping and thinking that my sweet potatoes have cooked out. Some of them have gotten browned and quite brown and caramelization on them. So we're developing some textures and flavors and differences. And I'm just making a a forage vegetable melange or a hash. And, uh, method I like to use because um, it's convenient. You can take a small amount of stuff and develop develop it into quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of product. Um, I also like it because it creates flavor complexities and juxtapositions, which are. Uh, uh, which are good for our, our brain and make us think about what we're eating and, it's, and, and really like eating multiple things instead of one item. Yeah. 
top it. We make sure we get some mushrooms on here. Falling over, but what I have here, I show you this earlier. This is uh, homemade gochujang, uh, Korean fermented chili paste. Uh, again, made by the same uh, by Nabi. Uh, he does some of the foraging. And so this is a condiment. It could be added in in the marinade or in the stir fry. Um, but it's medium spicy, and then it's got some earth and garlic and other pepper flavors. So this would be a great uh, item to put on the side. Use it as a, as a condiment at will um, to add salt and flavor and such uh, at the heater's discretion. So that's, I think this is very well made uh, chili. Uh, go Trujan. Without having an imported specialty product, this is really, really a great product. So that is a uh, full entree portion of a half foraged or better meal. Um, showing the best and first of spring, and I think in a week from now, you probably can do this meal again. Uh, we just don't have access to uh, the items, but we'll have some new items uh, that'll come on the scene as we get warmer and, and we'll start speeding up our growing season. And, having more product um, to play with. So that's, uh, that's my personal dinner for tonight. And have created this uh, stir fry and melange of vegetables. We're going to pair it today with um, Spirit Springs Farm, uh, which is an allocated um, single uh, orchard cider from Virtue Cider, which is in our general area and a uh, wonderful source of a dry European style cider that we came across uh, this summer and, and have found it to be an amazingly uh, high quality product that uh, happens to be a, within an hour of us but uh, is really acclaimed and uh, this being a single orchard um, from Marsalis, Marsalis is not very far at all from us, uh, less than a half hour and so uh, we are going to try this uh, product among a variety of other things we've purchased in the past. And, uh, See how it pairs with our uh, slightly Korean inspired foraged local, mostly local meal. So I hope you enjoyed this video um, and have a good night. Bon appetit!